Hi, I'm Mary Maida. This is a video of a conversation I had with Rick Neisel. Rick's dog Ranger was diagnosed with osteosarcoma in spring of 2019, roughly 16 months ago. Many of you know that even with surgery and chemo, the prognosis for osteosarcoma is very poor. But Ranger received an experimental therapeutic vaccine and the tumors that had spread through his lungs disappeared completely. A number of other dogs have received this vaccine have also enjoyed remissions not possible with today's treatments. It does not mean that every dog that receives the vaccine will respond as well or that every metastasis will clear up. And the data hasn't been published by the research team, though they are working on it. But it is a story of hope. Rick has also kindly shared with me detailed timeline of what they have gone through since the diagnosis. I hope you'll check it out. Thank you so much for joining me. Glad to do this. This is, uh, uh, you know, I'm a believer. And so uh, it's given me extra months and years, hopefully, and uh, of quality time with, uh, with Ranger. So yeah, I, I, I'm glad to do this. Well, so um, actually, I don't know. I don't even know where you live. What town? Where do you live? Little, little town in Ohio called Wilmington, Ohio. It's directly between Columbus, Ohio, and Cincinnati. So nice. uh, very small town. I had a vet that was willing to give the, the vaccine, uh, even without knowing much about it. And uh, uh, she's been wonderful and very, very supportive of everything that uh, I've done for, for Ranger. Great. And um, how old is Ranger now? Ranger is now eight. He turned eight in May. He mm -hmm. started this journey with a couple of months to go uh, before he was seven. It was uh, March uh, 10th when I first found out that he had a limp. Uh, he slid on some wet grass mm -hmm. and uh, started limping afterwards. He didn't show any signs until then, so I just thought it was uh, uh, maybe a, a pulled muscle or a strain or something. And it didn't get better. And um, so by, uh, Mar by April 19th, uh, I, he had the, his amputation and a very, very tough decision. As everybody knows that's gone through this, uh, it's one of the last things you want to do, but it's probably one of the best things for them. I see. Did you take uh, Ranger to a local vet and then to a veterinary specialist, a cancer specialist? Yeah. Um, when I met with uh, my local vet, uh, she uh, uh, gave some pain medicine at first, and then it didn't get better. So I took him back and she suggested we take an x-ray. And when she saw the x-ray, she came back and she suspected, although it wasn't very strong, uh, she suspected osteosarcoma. And I, I saw in her face how serious this was. I hadn't ever heard about osteosarcoma until that time. And, um, you know, I, I it was devastating because I, again, I could see on her face how serious it was. She yeah. says, let's hope it's not this. Um, but she sent the x-rays off to Ohio State and they came back and they said it was about 93% sure that it was osteo, mm -hmm. uh, but she recommended a bone biopsy. So that's what I did. I took him to uh, a, a emergency center, a bigger clinic that could do the fine needle bone biopsy. Mm -hmm. And it took a couple of weeks to get that information back. And when they did, they said it was a 95% sure that it was osteo. And um, it was then, you know, I, I had that tough decision still to make whether I was going to have him amputated, become a tripod or not. Yeah. At other resources, I know radiation, uh, stereotactic radiation is an option. And I did see some people with very favorable uh, outcomes with that. But I also know that it was very, very expensive at that time, much more expensive than probably as a retired teacher that I am that I could afford. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's the reason why I opted with the, um, uh, the amputation. Yeah, they, they definitely can become very expensive very quickly. Right. And so f during the two weeks, that must have been really uh, terrible having to, not knowing what it really was, but fearing it might really it was. be. I mean, it's yeah. one of those things where you're praying that it's not, but you, all, all signs are that it is. Yeah. And of course, then in that interim, you begin reading about all you can, you read about only 10% of the dogs survive and uh, the yeah. key, chemo even, you're talking about just length of, of time being months or maybe even a year, but not much. It's not uh, what you really want. Right. And this was all before I knew about 
the Yale vaccine. I didn't know anything about the Yale vaccine at that time. Yeah, and, and during that time while you're waiting, was Ranger in pain, continuing to limp? He was, I mean, he would limp, but he would still want to do things. He would still want to try running after balls and, and doing all the things that he wanted. But when he would slow down then, when he wasn't running, he would limp, he, you, it was a, a noticeable limp. It was, uh, I had gone to several other vets. Uh, uh, I drove three hours to a friend of mine uh, to get his opinion. And that's when I went and, and was gonna look at stereotactic uh, radiation. Mm -hmm. And Ranger, on the way home, there were, my neighbor kids were out playing and he was so eager to go see them. He loves the kids, he loves people. And he tried, yeah, I, I have a, uh, a seat protector and it comes and goes, it kind of divides the back seats from the front seat. Well, he got so excited that he, wanted, he jumped over the front seat, over that divider. And of course he landed on that one leg, the, the, the osteo leg. Oh. And he yelped and he was in pain oh. and everything. And that was, I went inside and I called the vet back and signed him up to have the amputation. I see, I see. And, and after amputation, how do you adjust? Well, as everybody, for, for, he, he adjusted pretty well. You know, the mm -hmm. first two weeks, of course, as everybody knows who's ever gone through the amputation, those first two weeks are tough. Um, now, he was under all kind of medication and, and uh, the, the vet that, that um, uh, dealt with him has his own cocktail of meds. And uh, it actually did him pretty well. But, you know, he was lethargic, he was sleepy, he was tired. And of course, as the owner, after seeing him all the time being active, you just wonder, well, did I make the right decision or not? But then as the, I, I kept a diary as a matter of fact, and I have shared this with many other people that are on some of the websites uh, to try to give them an idea of what it will be like in those two weeks. And uh, it was around the clock uh, giving medications. Uh, my vet has me you know, at 12, at eight, at 4 a.m., uh, at eight at night. And so, uh, you know, I, I know what a nurse is like now to be, try to be able to um, uh, give all those medications. But he came through after those two weeks, he started being himself. He started uh, chasing balls like he hasn't, you know, mm -hmm. always been. Um, I take him swimming and he swims. People are amazed when I go to the uh, uh, state park mm -hmm. to a lake mm -hmm. and, um, he wants two balls thrown out. So I throw the two balls out as far as I can mm -hmm. uh, with a chuck it <laughs> and he goes and gets them. And then when if people are watching, they'll stop and they'll see him come back in. And when he walks out of there with only three legs, they're amazed. And mm -hmm. uh, so he's adjusted uh, quite well. And uh, even after those two weeks and uh, it's now 17, uh, 19 months since he was first diagnosed. So uh, that's uh, a remarkable. And as you say, he, he eats well, he um, wants to play. Uh, he just overdoes sometimes. Matter of fact, that I went through an episode in July, in the end of June and July, where uh, I thought he had really injured himself because he couldn't walk. Uh, but it was because I think of a, a, a thoracic vertebra he probably injured that a little bit, just like we do with our backs. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it was painful to walk, mm -hmm. um, and uh, but he came through that. And so uh, I've I've done a few more adjusting things, so he uh, may not re-injure himself. Uh, put additional uh, rugs with backing on it on the tile, so his legs don't slip. Uh, uh, slip. Uh, he likes to sleep on my bed, so I have torn my bed apart, and I am sleeping on the floor with my mattress, so he doesn't have to jump up or jump down. And awesome. uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's he's he's a good boy. He, everybody loves him around here. All the neighbors, the neighbor kids. Uh, I usually have a neighbor that walks across the street to see him every day, and so um, yeah, I got to do the best for him. So, so his diagnosis was March 2019, right? Right. Uh, and then surgery was April? His amputation was April 19th, Good Friday. Okay. And because oh, wow. I, I, again, I kind of yeah. him hopped around not wanting to do it, but then decided that was going to be the best thing and gave him the best chance of longer survival. Yeah. And then did the vet recommend chemotherapy? At it that did. Point? It was the only thing that was recommended. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh, you could do palliative care and uh, or the chemo. And so I opted for four rounds of chemo of carboplatin. Mm -hmm. um, at the time that he, at the end of his amputation, his lungs were clear. There was nothing in his lungs. Mm -hmm. So he went through four rounds of carboplatin. That was one uh, treatment every three weeks. Mm -hmm. And at the end of those uh, three months, uh, uh, 12 weeks, mm -hmm. um, a lung met showed up. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the, I know that chemo is the ongoing treatment, the gold standard, I guess. But for me, I, every time I heard an oncologist talk to me, it was never anything about a cure. It was about extending the life. And it wasn't mm -hmm. normally in years. It was often in terms of months. Yeah. And I, that was very depressing also, because here you are doing all this and you're not sure what your outcome is going to be. Right. So once he ended those four, he actually, I found another clinical trial for him to get okay. into. Um, Ohio State was mm -hmm. uh, uh, doing a trial with uh, a, an experimental drug, a very powerful drug called Procaspase. The, the, okay. uh, the, tri the trial was called PAC-1 trial. Mm -hmm. And he would get uh, a, uh, a round of uh, another, he had another chemo treatment, doxorubicin. And then the following week, I was to give him every day that week, this powerful drug. I had to wear gloves anytime I handled that drug and the pills and everything, cut them up. So uh, he would do a week of that, then a week of the pills, then I would take him back to OSU. They would do another infusion of doxorubicin. Next week, I would do the pills. So that was eight weeks alternating to that. And at the end of those eight weeks, the lung mat had grown and it kept growing. Roughly when was that? Uh, that was uh, through uh, August, September, uh, and in, at the end of October. That was uh, 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 the last time I took him into uh, uh, OSU okay. and get the treatment. And, and lung, me lung meds showed up, lung metastasis was found around what month? Uh, they it would have been after uh, May, June, July. I guess it was in July. July. Right. Okay. I see. And it was at that time, I, I'm getting on all the, all the websites and trying yeah. to see what everybody else is doing. And, you know, you're looking at... Uh, diets, you're looking at mm -hmm. herbal medicines, you're looking at uh, other kind of treatments mm -hmm. uh, and, and to feed them and everything mm -hmm. uh, and to treat them. And that's when I came across the, uh, I think, Mike Rosa uh, uh, website mm -hmm. of uh, mm -hmm. the Yale canine cancer um, vaccine. Mm -hmm. And um, it was, when I joined, that was at the end of October because I'd already talked to uh, Dr. Mamula I mm -hmm. said, it's Ranger, Ranger's already been through a mm -hmm. clinical trial. And yeah. will he still be eligible? Because I really yeah. would be. I thought he would, I uh, thought one clinical trial would eliminate you from trying to do anything else. Right. But uh, Dr. Mamula said no. He, and matter of fact, he was very interested in it because Ranger had a lung med. Mm -hmm. And they were very interested in, in mm -hmm. dogs that had uh, a, a confirmed case of osteosarcoma mm -hmm. and also lung meds. And yeah. He was very interested in, yeah. in allowing Ranger to get into the uh, trial. Yeah, L many clinical trials will not let dogs with metastasis enroll because it's it, it's just too challenging, too difficult. And, and I think you know, in, in, when you're measuring and trying to measure the results, you don't want one study to interfere or have any kind of results on the other. Of mm -hmm. course, with the Yale vaccine, what the main thing that they were looking for is to see if your dog will make the antibodies. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and they're not, you know, Dr. Mamula uh, is right now has a survey going on to see how many dogs are surviving past a given time. Mm -hmm. And what, you know, there's a whole questionnaire there to try to give him some data about that. Mm -hmm. But the study itself was just to see, th will your dog make the antibodies? Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was perfect for Ranger because mm -hmm. uh, he's got the lung met, uh, he, he wasn't eliminated because he was in this other trial mm -hmm. and um, he could receive it almost immediately after three weeks after that last doxorubicin um, infusion. Uh, we set him up for November 7th. He got his first 
injection. Mm -hmm. um, he, uh, everybody warns about a, a, a knot that may form and this sterile abscess. Mm -hmm. I didn't notice anything on him on the first uh, shot. Matter of fact, we were sitting in uh, the uh, veterinary office on uh, November 21st for his second shot. And all of a sudden I was patting him and I felt a lump on the side of his head. Mm. And I thought, uh-oh, cancer. And because I didn't even read as to where the shots were given or how they were given, I just mm -hmm. taken him in. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course there was a, uh, my vet, she was on vacation. So they had a visiting vet coming in and taking care of the patients. And so she called Dr. Mamula to find out if there was any problem. He told him, no, that's probably a result mm -hmm. of uh, mm -hmm. injection, of his mm -hmm. reaction, antibody Amazing. reaction. He got the second shot on the other side of the neck. Three weeks and, later? Yeah. Was, yeah. And but within two days of the second shot, he had one of the largest knots, I think, that they've ever had. He had, mm -hmm. a, he had a lump that was very flat, very hard, about the size of my flattened head on the side of his neck. He didn't seem to be bothered by it at all, but it was... Wow. Scary. It was that hard. Yeah. It did open up uh, as the abscess in two days. But again, he didn't bother him at all. I did what Dr. Mamula said is put warm compresses on it. Yeah. I put a t-shirt on him that I used for his tripods when he had to hit that uh, incision open and mm -hmm. I would just cover that. So I put that on him just in case of a leak. But his uh, abscess cleared up in two days and then mm -hmm. it was completely gone in a week. Mm -hmm. I so, see. So, so the, the good thing about this trial is that you didn't have to travel to Yale University. You didn't have to go to Connecticut. They I, shipped you the vaccine. They shipped they, the, the vet, local vet the vaccine. Correct. And like I said, you have to get uh, the, uh, your vet willing to do that. Now, yes. I don't know if any vet yeah. not be willing to do it. Yes. Because it's, it's, it's very simple. All they have to do mm -hmm. is do the shots, mm -hmm. uh, two shots, subcutaneous, under the neck, uh, or under the skin of the neck, and then take blood draws, which they do all the time. Mm -hmm. And then send those, there's three blood draws, uh, about 21 days apart. And you send those blood draws, three of them, back into Yale. They analyze, they see if your uh, pup has been making those antibodies, they send you back the results. And um, the, one, the, the most wonderful thing is, is that the people at, at Yale, especially Dr. Manula, Mm -hmm. and, and Dr. Doyle, who are the two main uh, investigators, they're wonderful. They are unbelievably compassionate um, and answer all the questions that you want to answer and um, uh, are available. I mean, I can call them, I can write them, and you're going to get an answer back mm -hmm. very, very quickly. And um, so it's wonderful. When I joined yeah, they were uh, just beginning, or they, they were in the um, second or third phase of this trial. And I don't think many people were in it. I don't think there are as many dogs in this trial as there is now. Yeah. Because of that webpage, the information has gotten out, and then the dogs have exploded in terms of number of dogs that are in it. Yeah. I've read that there's over maybe 370 dogs in the trial right, right now. I'm yes. Be sure that there wasn't anywhere near that when Ranger mm -hmm. started. Now that right. he's been in it uh, uh, almost nine months. So That's when it. Ranger got the vaccine, he you knew that he had uh, a tumor that had started to grow in his lungs. He had metastasis. Right. right. I knew. Matter of fact, again, I was trying everything I can. You know, I, he's got a special diet. I fix him every night. I, I don't know whether the diet works or not, but I'm going to keep giving him all the antioxidants and turkey tail mushroom and feeding the protein and fish and fish oil and everything else, mm -hmm. trying to keep his body as healthy as possible to mm -hmm. fight it. And, but at that time, he, I, I turned to the vaccine, to the Yale vaccine, to see if it could help. Yeah. Okay. And then what happened? So, Well, then uh, he kept going back for follow-up uh, follow at OSU mm -hmm. to follow up for the other trial, even though the trial was not successful. And the mm -hmm. oncologist came and told me, well, I'm sorry, you know, it's not, and we're going to release him from the trial. He was still to come back and get uh, follow-up exams. So at the end of December, right uh, before Christmas, I took him back to OSU. This would have been now a month after his last uh, vaccine shot, his second vaccine shot. 
They came back, they took the x-rays, they gave an exam, and they came out and they, uh, the one oncologist came out and was surprising news, he said. He said that the uh, lung met is static. It's no longer growing. And mm -hmm. he said that was very, very good news uh, and kind of surprised. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so for me, that was the best Christmas gift I could have gotten. Uh, <laughs> it, it's static, as Dr. Mamula mm -hmm. said. That's a good sign. It may not be growing. Dogs can live a long time with a, uh, a, a lung met, but that if it's not growing, it's static. That's a good sign. That's great. So we, every two months, then I'm supposed to go back to OSU for a follow-up. So I did it in February. It took me back in February. They did a, uh, an x-ray along with the other exams. And then they came back and they really couldn't believe it. The lung that was their terms resolved. It mm -hmm. was gone. They couldn't mm -hmm. find it anymore. And um, so that's wonderful news. I mean, you know, that was just unbelievable news. Yeah. To me, I, I attribute it completely to the vaccine. I mean, it, mm -hmm. the chemos may have slowed the progress a little bit of, of it, uh, but it didn't stop it. And it was going to continue to grow and mm -hmm. spread, probably more mm -hmm. normal. Yeah. Uh, but right now, he's uh, clear. Uh, he's had several other exams with that. The last one was July 20th. Lungs are clear. And uh, so uh, I am a, a prophet of this uh, vaccine. <laughs> I, I, I tell everybody about it. I tell, and it is a miracle. For me, it's a miracle. It's just wonderful. It really is. It truly is wonderful. I mean, it puts a smile on my face all the time. And yeah. uh, so I tell him, I tell him what a special dog he is in many, many ways. And hopefully <laughs> he will be giving hope to many other people too. Because um, as you know, it's devastating to lose a pup. Uh, and uh, especially to this cancer that's so aggressive and uh, uh, you just feel hopeless. But this vaccine gives you hope. Yes. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So his diagnosis was 2019 in spring. So he's he's been clear now. It's almost a year and a half. Well, he's been clear in terms of. I mean, he wasn't clear all the way up until uh, the end of December because he right. still has right. one. But yeah, he is. Uh, he has beat this for that yeah. length of time because yeah. now. He's clear. He's good. He's good. Yeah. yeah. It's just remarkable when you have lung metastasis and it shrinks or stabilizes and then shrinks and disappears. I know. It's just dream come true. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's what you hope for. And when it happens, you know, you, you're just elated. So. Yeah. And I'm hoping that that happens over and over and over again for everybody's yes. dog yeah. that is getting this. So. Yeah. So not, and this doesn't happen to every dog with osteosarcoma. I, I have heard some dogs who's had ca cancer return. And I was curious, uh, Dr. Mamula was collecting tumor samples from some of the uh, pet parents. And did you have your tumor tested or it was already removed? So? I did not. It was already amputated yeah. in April. I didn't know that until, right. and of course, they didn't do an aspiration in the lung or try to find that one. Uh, you know, I, if, if Ranger passes, I will ask them to maybe to send some tissue of the cancer cells to Doc mm -hmm. uh, to help the, the research. And again, like I said, yeah. right now he's clear, he's happy, he he loves life, and uh, he and the kids love him, the neighbors love him. Like I say, and uh, we're going to keep this boy around. My goal is to give him the full life that he was supposed to have. Yes. So mm -hmm. whether that's four more years, five more years. If I keep feeding the way I am, it may be 20 more years. I don't know. So, so tell me, what are you feeding him? <laughs> what kind of supplements and what kind yeah, of well, diet? Yeah, it, it's really interesting. I mean, I, I got online and tried to read as much as I can. Mm -hmm. um, and I was getting rid of all the kibble because I, you know, you hear all, read all kinds of things that kibble's really bad, da, 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 da. Uh, it's got a lot of stuff in it. It's got too much carbohydrates. But then the oncologist at Ohio State asked me what I was feeding him, and he said, well, you should feed him some more kibble because that's got a rounded, well-rounded base. There's more vitamins and minerals. And so I listened to him. And mm -hmm. so now what I do 
he gets Purina one. It fills the bottom of his bowl with the kibble. And then I take three or four florets of broccoli. I chop those up real fine. Mm -hmm. up <laughs> yeah. And raw. Mm -hmm. I used to saute them, but now I just raw. raw. I do three uh, spears of asparagus. Another mm -hmm. good one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Chop it up. Put that all in there. And then I buy cans of canned salmon mm -hmm. and I uh, take a third of the can of salmon, mm -hmm. mix it in there, and then I mix everything up because it looks like a, a, a nice salad bed is what it looks mm -hmm. like. <laughs> and um, then I buy, I buy uh, Blue Buffalo Country Barbecue, I think it is, a canned dog food. It's mostly beef and everything else with gravy. And I mix about a fourth of that in there. And then on top of that, I pour in a heaping teaspoon full of turkey tail mushroom powder and mix up that all up. And then a cube, a chewable cube of turmeric. I place that in there. A couple of squirts of a substance called Life Gold Immune Booster. Put that in there. And then he, he's kind of interested. He knows by that time he's going to get fed. But then I give him, I, I bake about uh, five uh, uh, chicken breasts all at one time and I've got them stored in a little container so I pull that out and when I pull that out and I pull the chicken breast out he, that's when he comes up and he's ready to I, I slice <laughs> the chicken breast up and kind of spread it on top but as I'm slicing he's there ready for some pieces himself so he can yeah. keep sitting right yeah. beside you waiting for that so that's just every night he gets <laughs> one today and then he, that's he gets a lot of protein. He gets a lot of fish oils. He gets a lot of, hopefully, antioxidants. And uh, uh, whether it helps nice. him, I don't know. But it helps me think that I'm helping him. Yeah. And, and do you feed him once a day or twice a day? Once. Once, once yeah. a day. Once yeah. a day. My dogs love cruciferous vegetables. The cabbage, yeah. broccoli, carrot, and carrots too, and tomatoes. Yeah, yeah. I've been feeding carrots too, I, but I've read that it's got some sugars. I and so I, I they say don't feed sugars to them, da da da. So I don't know, but mm -hmm. um, he he used not mm -hmm. to. I used to offering broccoli from the plate, and he he would drop. It. He wouldn't even drop. It. But now if I chop it up in here, I mean his plate is clean. His bowl is silver clean. I would just be able to put it right back up in the uh, uh, the table again. But uh, uh, <laughs> he, wow, he swapped and everything. When he had, he's been a good eater all the time. Whenever he had chemo, there were about two or three days afterwards that he wasn't really willing to eat. And I'd have to pick it up and scoop in my hand and try to get him to eat. And he would eat most of it then. But uh, and now, uh, I don't think I would do chemo again. I really don't. I, I, I might go directly to the vaccine and uh, try that to see what that would be. And then if it didn't work, then, then I always had the... The, can, the, the chemo to try later, but uh, yeah, it's 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 still all out there to know yet. Uh, there's uh, what to do, and at least you have some options. And that's yes. Can is Ranger there with you? He is sleeping right now. Over oh, okay. here, the Ranger, Ranger. <laughs> He's sleeping on the floor over there. I don't know. Can you see him? Yeah, yeah. Hi, Ranger. <laughs> So he's, uh, he's, he likes that cool tile floor right over there. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, Rick, thank you so much. Well, I am glad to share the story. And, and uh, again, I'm hoping that uh, getting that story out will help some other people, too. And you already know, again, we think the world of Dr. Mamula. Mm -hmm. uh, he is, uh, he really is compassionate. Uh, and, and although this study is eventually hopefully going to help humans, that uh, kids especially, that he's very interested in helping dogs and our dogs. And mm -hmm. uh, of others, you know, we're talking about osteosarcoma, but there are other dogs, or there are other cancers that express that EGFR and the HER2 mm -hmm. uh, antigens on the cell surfaces, mm -hmm. which this uh, vaccine attacks. And uh, so there's hope for all of those, all, all of us. And um, uh, again, right now, I'm very pleased. There's always that, as you have said, there's always maybe that other shoe that's well in the fall that you just don't know about because we haven't been here that long with this vaccine. But I have high hopes that it's going to 
uh, give me those years that I talked about uh, uh, to be with. Uh, he's my buddy. It's just him and me. So I, uh, he's got to stick around for a while. <laughs> he probably will. He will. <laughs> it's really, really wonderful. And um, I think you're the one who introduced me to Mike Rosa. And I talked to him on the phone about yeah. Cody. And Cody is now, I think, third year, fourth yeah. year maybe. Yeah. And, yeah, and he's our guiding light. I mean, you know, he's the one that, uh, wow, this is happening. And, and Mike was the one that started the, uh, uh, the Yale uh, Canine and Cancer Vaccine uh, uh, webpage that mm -hmm. all of us found mm -hmm. uh, that can get more information and uh, uh, share our stories with and uh, give encouragement to for those who have to have to go through this. Yeah, it's, it's just so, so heartening and just gives us so much more hope. When, when my dog had osteosarcoma, I would read literature and everything was so depressing. Oh, very the only hope was that there was one paper that said, if your dog had infection right after surgery, the chance of that dog living a little bit longer is elevated, right? It's because the dog, st that stimulates your immune system. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I wish this vaccine was available four years ago when my gut said osteosarcoma. Whenever you talk to a vet, yeah, they don't give you much hope. There's they they. Whenever I went and talked to the regular vet, they had my vet. She had this sad face look on her, saying, "You know, because she knew that there's not." I have vet friends that have retired, and they're surprised that he's doing as well as he is because the normal diagnosis is not good, not good at all. That mm -hmm. they die within several months. Mm -hmm. uh, that he's alive six months after he was diagnosed, they're surprised. And now they're, they are unbelievably surprised that he's alive yeah. 17 months, 19 months after the original diagnosis Yes, and doing well. I mean, still chasing balls, swimming and, and doing all the things that he was loves to do all the time. So yeah. the, the, the wonderful thing, maybe four years down the road, maybe this vaccine will be available as a normal, just vaccine. It's a preventative too. Uh, and that's really interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, which would, because osteo, especially in large dogs, mm -hmm. in certain breeds, mm -hmm. is one of the main uh, reasons that they die. And right. uh, Oldens are one of them. And right. uh, Labs are one. And all these big breeds, uh, you right. see over and over. Bernie's uh, Mountain Dogs. And, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's sad because the dogs are all so, so beautiful dogs, but they get this cancer and that's why I kind of throw out the idea that people say well it's the it's the food it's the water I said well if that were the case then it's going to happen across the board in the same quantity right. from all the dogs and that just doesn't happen it right happens. There, there's a big genetic component to that exactly so uh, uh, hopefully this vaccine is uh, is uh, cross my fingers that mm -hmm. it, uh, <laughs> Is the hope that we all have and again I hope Ranger can be like Cody and be a guiding light uh, yeah. as a survivor. Yeah well we're rooting for a Ranger. We're rooting Thank for you too. Thank you so much. Yes ma'am.